Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Join me today as I dissect and analyse every thrilling moment of the epic Battle of Rock Roy from the movie Alatrist from 2006. And if you haven't already, do please like and subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. Uh, this movie is based off the book series, and so based in the Thirty Years' War period, but not necessarily uh, all of the characters are historical. So at this point in history, uh, the Spanish are basically the heads of the Habsburg Empire. They've got territories from Italy, Flanders, yeah, the sort of the German states, and Spain itself. And the Battle of Rock Roy was where they've now gone head to head with the French. And it's kind of whoever wins here is going to be, be dominant. Um, unfortunately, for the Spanish, it doesn't go quite the way they expected or hoped uh, due to military blunders basically quite a few of them so with that said and done let's actually get into the battle and then we can talk about what actually happened afterwards So this part of the movie is set right towards the end of the battle. Um, once the main Spanish force has collapsed and they've withdrawn, they form this giant square with their pipe blocks and musketeers uh, just to try and repel the French infantry and cavalry. And so that's kind of where this part of the film is set. But I do think overall uniforms seem pretty accurate. I quite like the seeing the, uh, the musket taking out the uh, top of the pike. So they've got quite good attention to detail. One critique I do have with a lot of war movies is when cannons are firing. Um, I mean, here it looks like the cannonballs are blowing up, but I'm pretty sure we were prior to explosive artillery shells at this point. Um, but it's just the sort of the carnage that would have been inflicted of cannonballs plowing through multiple men. There would have been sort of blood and parts going all over the place, which you never really see in films. I'm not saying I really want to see it, but just um, you kind of see people falling and you don't really see the damage that the cannonballs are doing, so to speak. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else feels that way. Uh, let me know down below. Yeah, I quite like seeing this sort of the troops coming forwards, firing them, withdrawing to allow the next troops to come forwards to fire, uh, so they can keep up that steady rate of fire. It's pretty, pretty good, and uh, from what I've read. Quite historically accurate. Perhaps they would have waited until they were a bit closer to fire, uh, but it was a tactic of the cavalry at that uh, time period to sort of charge up, fire, um, and then sort of go in like a circle uh, motion. So they would fire, circle around, reload, and circle back in. Um, so firing on the move, not out of the ordinary. <laughs> I'll be honest, I do very much like to see that pipe block turning into the square there. I mean, historically, it was thousands of men, so it would be in a much larger and longer, more of a rectangle than just a single square. Uh, but obviously, budgets, I would assume, have caused it to just be slightly smaller, but it does look good. <laughs> I 
cool to see that the musketeers are withdrawing back inside. A lot of times it's kind of assumed in movies, but here they're actually showing it, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not entirely sure if the cavalry would have been charging into a form square like they're shown here, um, but potentially, so I'm not going to say yes or no, it could have done, could have been the case. I know later in the day they were blasting holes through the square with artillery, uh, using sort of grape shot or canister shots or the equivalent at that time so that the cavalry could charge through the gaps. <laughs> Now this I like, usually whenever you have hand-to-hand um, -hand combat in movies everyone just charges in some sort of wild melee, whereas here you've got the blocks advancing steadily trying to keep order and control, so that's very good, I like to see that. Well, that was very interesting how as the pipe blocks met a few of the men dropped their pipes and started crawling underneath and using their daggers i'm not sure if that was a historical thing or not if you know let me know down below but it seems logical seems practical to do so whilst the pipes are up ahead uh, for men to crawl underneath and start slashing into the unprotected lower bodies uh, so that's pretty interesting <coughs> <coughs> So this chap was actually the commander of the Spanish forces and he'd been wounded earlier in the day so they strapped him into a chair and he was kind of held up above everyone's heads and he did actually get killed. Um, so that's quite good that they've uh, got that historical accuracy into this movie. <laughs> So I'm not entirely sure why at this point the whole uh, battle has turned into a, just a mass melee. Could be because by the end when the Spanish forces, they were surrounded and they were just annihilated, it could be representing that part of the, uh, of the battle. So it could be kind of realist. <laughs> with the battle scene. Um, and the movie is in Spanish, or it was Spanish film, uh, but it is on YouTube if you want to go and watch it, so I'd recommend going to watch it. Uh, but overall, I was pretty impressed. Uh, uniforms look pretty accurate, the combat seemed pretty accurate. Uh, the only thing that you could critique 
is Scale, but hey, it's a movie. Um, I don't think it had the highest budget in the world, so for what they had, I think pretty good. Uh, now I'll just probably go over a little bit about what happened historically during the battle itself. So Roqua was a small fortified village which the Spanish, um, they didn't need the town, but it occupied quite a strategic highway that would lead all the way down to Paris, hence really the main reason for the battle. Um, it was kind of a, an open clearing surrounded by woodlands. Um, both the armies were e pretty well equally matched because the Spanish did have reinforcements coming under a commander called Beck, but he hadn't arrived at this stage. So the battle itself started late at night or early in the morning. Um, the Spanish had some troops out in the woods on the right side of, of the battle, uh, which the French, a, uh, basically a traitor had told the French they were there, so the French decided they would launch an assault to try and rid themselves of those uh, Spanish troops. And at the same time that they were advancing on those, the cavalry of the French left advanced and got countercharged by the Spanish cavalry. Uh, the French cavalry was broken, uh, allowing the Spanish to swing around and start to engage the main French line. And whilst that was happening on the French left, the French right cavalry and infantry started advancing towards the Spanish. The cavalry started their charge against the Spanish cavalry and were overwhelming them quite significantly. Um, then the French infantry came in and surrounded them and pretty well annihilated the Spanish left flank. With that, the French cavalry and infantry were able to push on to the left flank of the main Spanish army. Back on the other side of the river in the French army, um, the Spanish troops that had engaged earlier had pushed now onto the main French force. Uh, but they were starting to get surrounded. French cavalry had come back from their earlier route, and then French cavalry, which had gone across the river on the right, now swung round, and again, unfortunately for the Spanish, charged them straight into the rear, uh, surrounding them and annihilating those troops. So with most of their force uh, annihilated across the river, um, the Spanish formed into their tercio blocks. Uh, they basically it shows uh, five. It was six of them which later merged into one large square basically uh, which was surrounded by the French infantry and cavalry. It was around this time that the command, acting commander of the Spanish decided that surrender might be an option so he called out to the French. The French rode forwards, the French commander, but unfortunately the message hadn't got through to all of the rank and file and some of the Spanish musketeers opened fire. Um, with that the whole French army basically attacked um, and before the French commander, who realised it was just a mistake, could regain order, uh, most of the Spanish had been slaughtered. So that's just a brief over overview of the battle. I definitely recommend you go to the Gods and Generals channel um, and watch the documentary on the whole thing. Um, that'll give you much more information about the background and the battle itself. Um, but until next time, guys, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, so keep gaming, keep building, and I'll see you next time.